The concept of frantic architect is pretty simple. Try to build the highest tower until it falls down due to gravity. I first heard about it from Will Kwan when he made a video about how his mobile app got 400k installs on the app store. Now I always thought this looked pretty cool, perhaps because it was such a simple concept or perhaps because Will stared into my soul for 13 minutes straight. Whatever the case is, the game stuck in my mind, but unfortunately I never got the chance to make it until now. Recently, I started my game dev journey in JavaScript and realized that recreating Frantic Architect is the perfect way to get started with learning 3D physics. Here's what happened. Now before we jump straight into the examples, I need to provide you guys with some important context as to why such a simple game took me four entire weeks to make. You see, I built Frantic Architect in JavaScript using 3JS without a game engine like Unreal or Unity. Now the best way to understand the difference is to just take a look at an example. When you're working in Unity, you can easily add physics and gravity to a 3D object by setting its type to rigid body, or something like that. I'm not exactly sure how Unity works. Anyway, the point is, the game engine does the heavy lifting behind the scenes, but 3JS is not a game engine. So if you want to add physics or gravity in 3JS, everything is up to you. You have to first find a physics library, install it into your project, set up the physics world, add compound bodies without an easy to use UI, and also sync the game world with the physics logic. What takes one click in Unity or Unreal took days of research, multiple failed attempts, and dozens of lines of code in JavaScript. Now, looking back on this, the task doesn't feel so bad, but four weeks ago I had no idea what I was doing. Just take a look at some of these demos. Now, I first started working with AmmoJS and eventually switched over to CanonJS, but getting physics to work just didn't go so well at the beginning. I was pretty confused about how compound bodies worked. After a few more attempts, I had what I felt like was some progress, until this happened. Now, fortunately, this was just a small issue with friction coefficients. All I had to do was make the compound object slippery so it wouldn't stick to the ground. Eventually, things started to come together. I started to understand physics, compound bodies, and also how to update mass offsets. And I could finally start working on rendering the game on screen. Now at this point, I knew I was in the end game. The rest of the code basically wrote itself, as you can see from the working frantic architect demo. Just to mention some of the key points, you can see that I rendered the tower, the ground, and the phantom block in 3JS, and synced everything with the physics world. Once the tower tipped in the physics world, it would be reflected back in the game world. I also added some directional lighting and rotated the camera around the scene just like it worked in the original game. If you look closely, you'll definitely notice some bugs and glitches, but the core gameplay is there, so it was time to clip it and ship it. Since I made this game with JavaScript, it is actually playable on the web and mobile devices without requiring a download. You can check it out on gamedex.dev forward slash frantic architect. And yeah, that's about it. My one month journey of learning physics and building frantic architect summarized in around five minutes. If you made it this far, I'd really appreciate it if you could just hit the like button, I hear that does wonders for the YouTube algorithm, and subscribe for more suboptimal content about game development with JavaScript. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.